الله حتى يكمل إيماني بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله I pay the praise that is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah whom Allah guides will not be guided and whom Allah guides will not go astray so it is all in the power of Allah and as we are continuing uh, this episode with uh, some other story from the glorious Quran we started already with uh, stories before in the chapter of the cave chapter number 18 from the beginning actually towards the um, verse 83 and those um, earlier verses we addressed the story of the people of the cave then we uh, went to the story of the man who had two gardens and who had an argument with his own neighbor and companion regarding what he actually had and how he boasted about his own power and the end result of destruction for his own wealth and property because he did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in really attributing that to Allah who is the source of all good and then we talked about the story of Musa alayhi salam with Al-Khadr a righteous man whom Allah given some knowledge in order to teach one of the great knowledgeable prophets, Prophet Musa alayhi salawatullahi wa salamu. So all of these stories um, tell us something important about lessons that we need to take from the glorious Quran. Now coming today to a story, another story, and as I mentioned in the first episode regarding why was this revealed to our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the glorious Quran. Well, if you um, go back to the records of history uh, at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he was asked by the disbelievers of Quraysh that he would need to bring evidence if he were a prophet. And this was a challenge for him. Tell us about uh, the people of the cave, these young people who stayed in the cave for a number of years. And tell us about a man who roamed the earth to the east and the west and um, he had this power and tell us about uh, the ruh or the spirit now the answer to the ruh and spirit came in surat al-isra or the chapter of isra and the answer to the other two questions came in the surah or chapter of the cave now we already addressed these other stories but today as i'm coming to share with you this very interesting story of a king unlike so many other kings because this king had so much might and so much power he is really by definition of today is a superpower in his own kingdom because Dhul Qarnayn he was a man of power and might yet he was a righteous man and the verses which are verses 83 to 99 address this topic in Surah Al-Isra when Allah says وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ They ask you about ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ this very famous man and why was he called ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ the man with the two places of rising and setting the Qarn is actually like in Arabic it means a horn but actually like he was up to where the sun would rise, you know, he went as far as, or had the, the kingdom, um, as far as the sun would rise in the east from, and as far as where the sun would set in the west uh, in. So really he had all this might and power, and probably some of the um, interpreters of the glorious Quran 
المفسرون they said that he was named because he had all this might and power well the Quran says to the Prophet say I will mention from his story to you سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض we have established him on an earth وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا and we have given him from everything because he had soldiers he had wealth he had uh, property he had so much really in power that would establish him on the earth and what he did he was checking his kingdom so he went um, and, and followed a certain path he went first to the west and uh, he reached a point where the sun would would be setting in a very black muddy and hot um, spring this is the, the, the language uh, of the glorious Quran but it does not really say that this is the end of the world and the sun really sets truly in, in that particular uh, muddy spring what actually is appeared to anyone who was looking in the horizon that it was actually indeed um, setting as if it was like setting just like when you see uh, the sun setting um, towards the end of the sea and in, in the wide horizon it appears to you that it was setting inside the sea in the water when in fact it's not so that is uh, very interesting because anyway he, he reached probably to the end according to the historians and the interpreters of the glorious Quran to um, the Atlantic Ocean on the west probably in, in Africa in Morocco or even in some other parts of Europe but nonetheless it was towards the Atlantic Ocean and in that place he found some disbelieving people people who were uh, committing uh, transgression against Allah who did not believe in Allah because they rejected the message that came to them and Allah said either you you punish them or you uh, do something that is uh, good to them well he said who was a just person well he said you see when we talk about uh, injustice we normally uh, think about injustice when we do others some harm or we take their own rights that is injustice the gravest of all injustices are the ones directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah says in Surah Luqman inna shirka la dhulmun azim verily shirk or taking partners with Allah is a grave and huge injustice because what is for Allah as he created us and and made us into humans well he provided us with life with everything that would sustain our being here on this earth and yet he has the right upon us to worship him alone and not to take partners how would we attribute all of what he has given to us to someone else that's not justice that is not kindness that is not gratitude and in that respect Dhul Qarnayn was was saying as Allah commanded him to deal with them you know in the in the best manner he said Yes, there will be some punishment. They will go through some uh, torment in this life. But it's not like the one facing them, awaiting them in the hereafter. Because everyone will, will go back and return to their own Lord, Allah. And then he will punish them again severely because he knows the extent to where they went and still in this life even someone committing shirk would be given it an opportunity to come back and repent from his own commitment of that wrongdoing the gravest of all crimes is to commit shirk against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is basically the idea in this regard where we need to emphasize this point and Alhamdulillah Dhul Qarnayn was conscious enough to think about and to deal with the issue justly in that respect but he says again and anyone who believes and does righteous deed 
would be uh, facing some uh, real good result something good will be rewarding uh, uh, to him and we will give him a soft and kind words meaning that if anyone would would believe and have the basics of faith in iman and yet he may not be so much committed he would commit mistakes here and there and but you you will be softer with him because he has attained the basics of what a person needs to do of course we need to continue but i think we need to have a break please stay with us and we'll be back very shortly <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. We have been telling you about the story of Dil Qarnayn, a righteous man and a king with huge kingdom who was actually during the time even before the birth of Isa or Jesus peace be upon him in the very earlier part of history but he was a man of righteousness, a man that was ruling with justice and as he was um, you know, uh, telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was saying that if anyone would believe in Allah, he will find some uh, good reward awaiting him. This is what he did to the people whom he found in the east, in the western part of the globe at his own time. What he did, he went now to the opposite. He went to the east. What did he find there? Well, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ مَطْلِعَ الشَّمْسِ وَجَدَهَا تَطْلُعُ عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ لَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِهَا سِتْرَ You know, he went to some vast land, like a desert, where there was no protection. You know, these are, were very much um, people of nomadic uh, type of life in the earlier part of, of history, where they're uh, tribal, they have not been civilized to the extent that they were really building shelters for themselves to protect them from, from the sun because the sun would rise on them and it would, they would be uh, uncovered uh, towards the sun and there is no screening, nothing to, to protect them there. And he had some knowledge about, uh, about what they were, were doing. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that he, this man had, had some, some knowledge of um, what uh, Dhul Qarnayn would have he found these people, he just left them because these were people that were actually uh, people that uh, did not do any mischief, they did not do anything bad, they were just living their own life and they were kept as such. And then he moved into the middle and he found a place called in between the two mountain cliffs, Hatta إِذَا بَلَغَ بَيْنَ السَّدَّيْنِ Two walls, great walls of mountains وَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِمَا قَوْمًا لَا يَكَادُونَ يَفْقَهُونَ قَوْلًا He found some people that were really not, you know, they just rarely would, would understand a word. They would not be able to communicate very well, and yet because of their nature of what they, what they were living in, because they were living again in, in fighting with some other tribes, and they were weak to the extent that other tribes were actually coming to them and attacking them, one of the major tribes in those areas, Gog and Magog. Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. They have mischief in the world. Mufsiduna fil ard. And who are these um, two major tribes, Gog and Magog? Or nations actually that uh, Gog are the Tatar and, and Magog are the uh, Mughal, and of course we knew of the power, in fact, um, these very um, troubly minded type of people, you know, these people who were so wild, they were invading these tribes, these weak tribes, and inflicting, um, you know, harm on them in a great extent, and they were just tired of doing that. And they saw um, Dhul Qarnayn with his own righteousness, um, a man that who could actually, you know, stop these people from being, you know, so wild and so aggressive um, and transgressant against their own neighbor. So what he did, well, he said, uh, and they, they suggested that well, they live in between these mountains, 
and these mountain cliffs. So the best thing is to keep them in there so that, uh, you know, they would not be harming others and they would not be even touched by others. And I think the, the idea seemed to be fine because they had the, their own wealth inside. They could still live on their own land without going into the other lands. And, and Dhul Qarnayn said, we need your help. I don't need any tribute. I don't need any reward. I just need your might and power. I will erect this wall between you and them, and then you'll be kept safe. Atuni Zubar al-Hadid. You know what we need, since you do have this, it's just give me pieces of iron. Hatta idha sawa bayna sadafayn. You see, he had some idea as what to do, is that he will establish these pieces of iron being um, together, and then what he would do on top of that, what he would do is um, it, it burn it so hard that, so that uh, the iron will be uh, joined on top of that. He'll put some molten copper. This qitr or molten copper is going to be on top of it. So it will be very, very uh, slick and it will not be easy either to you know, go on top or even go and dig through. They were not able even to go on top, to climb until the end of, of the mountain cliff, to go to the other side. Nor were they able even to dig through because it was, you know, very solid and very strong. And it took them so much time to do that. But I think uh, it shows how a king or a ruler would do for his own people and the protection of those who are within his kingdom. And that's why the glorious Quran says this is out of mercy. And really punishment in Islam is not just to make people suffer, but really to bring mercy to you and to the others. This is a blessing and a mercy from my Lord. To you, O oh poor people, really uh, attacked by these people and even uh, mercy for those people so that they may think, well, what have we done? I think imprisonment at times is, is good for the person so that they would know what, um, what actually to do, uh, you know, just reflect on the wrongdoings that they have made or revisit what they did in order to see how they went wrong and from that we know that uh, sometimes uh, putting you alone or keeping you within your own limits is, is positive at times in order for, for someone to learn about uh, what they do and their own plan for future and, and probably correcting their mistakes. And until the time of Allah would come, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّي حقا, When the promise of my Lord would come true, they would come out. Because what Allah uh, gives is, is really the truth. And His own promise is true. So it is so important that uh, this king was in the service of his own people. And of course, uh, Allah left these people to each other. Even these people were, um, you know, going against each other or even were melting and really uh, because there were so many probably it was so crowded for them um, to stay all together or it could mean that on the day of judgment they will be among the very many because on the day of judgment all people will be brought together back into life from Adam peace be upon him until the last person on earth all will be resurrected and collected on a flat, you know, plain land. And according to the historical records and according to the true authentic ahadith, this is going to be in Sham or greater Syria, the land of Mahshar, the land of resurrection, where all people will be uh, together into that uh, piece of land. And of course, uh, it will be so huge. So in the, in the language of the glorious Quran, they would be 
um, you know, moving as waves into each other. And when the trumpet will be blown in, of course, they will be all gathered. So this story is telling us so much about first the just king who actually ruled and was visiting all parts of his kingdom and was looking after the, his own people and caring for them. So he was correcting uh, the disbelief that took place in the western part of the, of the universe. He also went and um, checked on the people in the east part and so that these people were living their own life without uh, interference, without any uh, trouble. And he, he, you know, they probably needed uh, that sun because they probably was so, they were so close to the far east where it was cold and the sun um, would, would shed light on them um, as it rises. And in the middle were people, and they said, probably this was um, in between Armenia and Azerbaijan today. As we know it, as some historians would tell us that this is the land of Gog and Magog, where this was built. And by the way, these people uh, came out later on because their coming out was, was part of the end of time or, or coming closer to the hour. And they came out. Probably uh, they, they, this was, was done in very earlier times and, and, and they came out, some of them at least, um, came out, they destroyed so many, you know, the Mughal and the Tatars uh, and what they did to, to so many um, uh, emperors and also uh, what they did to, to so many uh, lands. Among them was the Islamic Kingdom um, where Baghdad was the capital of the Abbasid uh, uh, state and they actually uh, destroyed Baghdad and we know from what they did under uh, Hulaku what he did to all the knowledge that even they threw these books in, inside the river, um, the Euphrates, and um, you know, all of that came, uh, it was blackened by, because of the ink that was uh, actually melting with water. So uh, these people were, were wild and they destroyed uh, civilizations. But uh, what we need to learn from is that uh, this is something, a story that uh, is for us to learn from and to tell to others and to even our children, to those who don't know that, in order to get some more knowledge and some more understanding. And that's the way the Quran explained the earlier events, not just for the mere telling of these stories, but rather for the wisdom and the lessons that we can get. And we need to stop here, because this is the end of our episode today. Inshallah, by the grace of Allah, see you in some other time where we have more stories from the glorious Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.